In 1948, archaeologist Dr. Ricardo Alegria found evidence of very early human inhabitants in the area of Maria de la Cruz Cave. He managed a huge archaeological dig and discovered human artifacts dating back possibly as far back as 4000 BC through to 100 AD. These findings are evidence of most likely the first nomadic human inhabitants of Puerto Rico. Also in the area of the cave, archaeologists found artifacts from a much later and more advanced people, the Dainos. The Dainos left behind pottery, tools, bones, and shells of all types, and burial sites. Currently at this location, there is a park with swings, water jets, and a camping area. Another interesting fact is that in the dome of its cave, there are a documented 40 hives that are home to approximately 90,000 honey-producing bees. The Tainos were uh, the natives that used to inhabit this island generally from the year 1000, 1100 to the beginning of the 16th century, the early 1500s. That's what uh, historians and archaeologists refer to. They like to classify it, but really it goes way back. It goes around at least 7,000 years ago when the very first people arrived to this island. and. Uh, they're known as the archaic people, the very first people, because this island was uninhabited at one point in time. Mm -hmm. There was no one living on the island because this island emerged because of the movement of the tectonic plates that pushed up this landmass up. And so this is the little tip. This and the archipelago is a little tip of a huge landmass under the sea. So that's why if we climb to the top of those mountains and we start digging around, we're gonna find marine fossils. Mm -hmm. uh, fossilized uh, starfish, clams, fossilized clams, and other kinds of stuff that that uh, let us know that this island was submerged and was emerged. So around 7,000 to 7,500 years ago, the very first people arrived. And how do we know that? We know that through archaeological evidence. And the oldest archaeological evidence that has been found to date it was found in the south, in the south, mid-south region, in between Ponce and Juanadillas. And uh, according to Carbon 14 tests, that uh, archaeological evidence dates to the year approximately 5,000 to 5,500 BC. So that plus 2,000 is 7,500 years ago. That's when the very first people arrived. And since the evidence was found in the south, we believe that they came from South America emigrating from uh, that area and visiting the different islands of the Lesser Antilles until they arrived here and some of them decided to stay and settle. So throughout those uh, millennia, many people have arrived and many people have gone. So, so Puerto Rico, like the other islands, is a very dynamic place, you know. is like a snapshot of the epitome of Thai culture and uh, it consists of 10 ceremonial sites uh, excuse me 10 ceremonial courts right uh, or plazas we call them bates like the, the natives used to call them bate bate means ceremonial court or plaza where the Aborigines or natives of the island used to celebrate their different socio-religious activities. And we know a little bit about what was going on through the eyes of some of the uh, Spaniards who actually got to see them participating in this kind of social activity. But we have to be very careful when we read and interpret what the Spanish wrote because for what the natives was uh, religion and culture for the Spaniards was sacrilege and idolatry. Mm -hmm. They really did not want to understand these people. All they wanted was to was to uh, conquer, basically. And uh, during that conquest, they killed many of them. Not all of them. Several hundred of them survived, but but the vast majority were wiped out 
first through disease, because mm -hmm. they were not immune to the disease that the uh, Europeans brought over, and second to the enslavement and atrocities that were committed against them. So it's a very sad and tragic story. Yeah. However, there's a silver lining because many did survive the conquest and eventually some of them intermarried with the Spanish, some of them intermarried with the Africans that were brought over as, as slaves, you know, to supplement their workforce. And the resulting mixture is us. The Tainos have no written language. Okay, so everything was like oral tradition. Lots of people ask me if I know or I can interpret the significance or meaning of these petroglyphs. And that's hard because there's no written language. There were no eyewitnesses in this case to tell us what these, these petroglyphs meant. But in general terms, the petroglyphs are associated with the Taino people's mythology and religious beliefs. Since they lived in peace and harmony with nature, they used to admire things in nature. Whatever impressed them in nature, they would incorporate into their religion and culture and they would carve onto the boulders in order to preserve and promote. Cueva Ventana, or window cave in English, is a large cave on a natural formation of limestone located in the city of Arecibo. The cave and surrounding areas are home to a great diversity of animals, including different species of bats and a wide variety of endemic or indigenous species of plant life. The cave also includes petroglyphs and calcium formations in the shape of mounds and icicles. of this location is an opening overlooking a beautiful valley in the Rio Grande. I hope you enjoyed watching this compilation of Borican's rich history and beautiful lands. I want to end with this picture of a semi, which is a fundamental symbol in the Taino religion. For the Taino, each semi is a deity or ancestral spirit housed in a sculptural object. We believe the carvings bring the spirit to life. If you look at the central point, this represents Yaya, the creator, whose name means that which has neither beginning nor end and which has no male ancestor or creator. The mouth-like point represents Goabe, the underworld, the place of the dead, where Hupia, the spirit of the dead resides. The final point represents the land of the living. Here resides Goiz, the spirit of living people. As we live our modern lives, I believe it's important to understand our beginnings so that we bring forth what is valuable and also learn what we wish to change or transform. Let's do this in the name of our creator, ancestors, for ourselves and our future.